it's Alex, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what I've been sewing this month so far. If you're new to my channel, big warm welcome. And if you watched my last video, I'm sorry it's taken so long to get back. Uh, you know, life. Uh, lots of you took advantage of that amazing Craftsy price. Um, so we just must all remember to set reminders for next year before it auto renews. So I've got two things to show you today. I have actually been sewing something else, but it's for pattern testing and uh, hasn't launched yet. But literally in the last five minutes, I've had a message from the pattern designer to say she's launching it tomorrow. So if I get my act together, I might manage to get another video up in time uh, or to sort of simultaneously come out tomorrow uh, reviewing that. So if I do, then that's a good, oh, listen to this segue, good idea to hit the subscribe bu button below and then you'll be notified when that next video comes up. You know, I'm almost getting professional at this. Um, so what I am going to show you, however, is this top that I made, which is the Josie blouse from Experimental Space and these trousers that are the Chiara trousers or pants from Tessuti Patterns or Tessuti Fabrics over in Australia and New Zealand. And I'm gonna start off with the blouse. Um, last time I did a pattern review, which was the Armadale dress, I did something that I hadn't done before, which is I did a little bit of detail of the uh, some footage, some close-up information about the design details and looking at the, ins the inside of the garment. And lots of you said that was really helpful, so it was a bit of a tester. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, because uh, I think with this floral print, it's a little bit hard to see some of the details on it. So I'll insert that at a later point. Um, but I was drawn to this pattern because I am very partial to a button up or button through shirt and I really like making them and I find them to just be a very versatile thing to wear and if I'm not careful that is pretty much all I'm likely to wear um, if it's not a t-shirt or a jumper. So I'm kind of always on the lookout for an alternative and in fact I bought this pattern last year and surprisingly enough I actually bought a paper pattern and I say surprisingly because using it made me realize how often I use PDFs. I actually went to my computer to look at the instructions numerous times during the process. I was so not used to having it all written down in a little booklet. Um, but yes, I think I bought it from Bobbins and Bolts when I did a course there last year. Um, but, I, but it appealed to me because um, it's got the fabulous sleeves. I'm always fond of a fab sleeve. And it's also got a really nice pleat detail across the shoulder here and then at the top of the sleeve. Um, so I thought it could be a good alternative. And I chose this fabric to make it in because this is one of the fabrics I bought when I met uh, the Hammy dressmaker at Longsight Market a little while ago and it cost less than two pounds a meter. So I chose it because I was kind of looking for something with these sorts of colors because they work with my kind of autumnal color scheme. Um, it's floral which is a little bit out of my comfort zone but at less than two pounds a meter I thought well a if I don't find myself liking the print or the colour scheme, it doesn't really matter. And B, if there's something not quite right about the fit, that also doesn't matter. Because this isn't a pattern company I've ever used before, so I don't know or didn't know quite how it would work in terms of fit and, and whether I'd get on with it. But it's one of those pattern companies that doesn't use a size range that gives numbers or letters, this time they give them names. And I made an Eve or an Evie, which fitted my bust and waist measurements, but strangely was smaller than my hips. And that's unusual. Normally my bust and my hips are in the same category and it's my waist <laughs> that's usually a size or two up. So that was kind of unusual, but they did give the finished garment measurements and I could see there was plenty of ease in there. So I stuck to an Evie 
And as I say, I've made absolutely no alterations whatsoever and I'm really pleased with it. I think it fits perfectly. Um, so what I will do, actually before I do it, I was going to say what I will do is I will show you those inside details. But this was tucked in, so let me just show you it untucked. And to be honest, I think I would wear it either way, either tucked or untucked. Or I might even do the old half tuck. Um, yeah. So this is my Josie top on uh, the glorious Clary, uh, so named by <laughs> her creators at Aldi. Um, so it's the front doesn't have any darts, it's just uh, cut on the fold, you know, round neck, pretty very straightforward. It's got a dipped hem and it's obviously got some shaping at the side. At the back there is a centre back seam running down that back and that is not a straight seam so you couldn't for example cut that piece on the fold it's giving it some shape there um, which I think is part of what makes it work really well gives it a really nice flattering look um, and then you've got the sleeves and the shoulder seams here which are kind of what gives it its wow factor. So you've got the pleat detail here on the shoulders and then it matches with the same pleat on the sleeve head down to here on the sleeve and then giving you that billowing sleeve into a gathered cuff. I mean, you can see I haven't used the most exciting buttons in the world because after all this was a wearable toile um so yeah it's not got a placket it doesn't need one this um slit here for the cuff is just um bound with a bias binding basically um so it gives you full information on how to do the cuffs and those pleats are not anything like as complicated as you might think the instructions are really nice and clear Let's look at the inside. So as you can see, it just has a straightforward bias binding around the neckline, so that's pretty easy. So this is the inside of the back. Now, the instructions do give you information on how to do French seams for the sleeves, but I thought I'd do them throughout. So my centre back seam is a French seam, as you can see, as are my side seams. And then, just to make life really taxing, I also did French seams on the sleeve, which was a little bit tricky because obviously on the outside, you're matching that pleat on this sleeve head here. What's quite nice about this pattern is this seam here on the pleat is actually enclosed by the pleat, so you don't have to worry about finishing that. So that's really nice. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased with this. I have to say, because it was a toile, I perhaps didn't take as much care with it as I might have done had I kind of known it was going to work or if I was thinking of making it directly out of my main fabric. But given that, I'm still pretty pleased with it. So I hope that was really useful. I'm really happy with it. I'm definitely going to make another one. How soon I'll get round to it, I don't know. But overall, yeah, really, really happy with it. I'm also really happy with the colours and the print of this. So I just wish it wasn't polyester. Um, but it now means that I'm going to keep my eye out for something in uh, a fabric, you know, I don't know, maybe a cotton or a viscose or something like that. So I feel like that really works well. Um, but overall, the shape is really nice. Um, you know, if I wanted it more fitted, I could, but I don't think that's kind of in keeping with it. I think it works well, and I really like that seam at the back that gives you a bit more shaping. I've definitely got a bit of a sway back. Um, I often have to make a sway back adjustment um, on dresses and yeah, all sorts of things. So to have that there, really, um, I really like that. I think it's quite flattering. For me, this is definitely a win. It's nicely drafted. The instructions are really good. 
they're nice and detailed and if you're somebody that's not fantastically experienced and you fancy giving it a go they do give you quite a lot of information um, there's information about fitting and all the steps along the way and uh, just before I started doing this I went and had a little look on the website and by coincidence they've just been doing a sew along for it so I didn't actually know that uh, but I'll put a a link in the description box below so yeah there's a sew along literally we'll walk you through step by step if you fancy making it I definitely give it a thumbs up so I also mentioned the Chiara pants in that same video uh, you know with patterns for the autumn and the reason I really like them is that um, I wanted to wear wide leg pants a bit more this year and the only ones I already had were made from a ponty so I wanted something a little bit more structured that was made from a woven fabric uh, Tasuti also have a relatively new pattern which is a stretch one which would be more for a ponty but I liked the look of this one because it is I'm going to tuck this in um, because it is flat fronted uh, with no bulk no messing around around the front no fly um, or waistband or, or anything it's got a grown on waistband so it's a facing in effect and it has a side zip so it just fastens at the side here um, and all the rest is absolutely flat so it's quite fitted across the front and across the bottom and then it, they literally just go out in a straight line from I guess from hip down and I really like that look I think they look really nice really comfortable to wear uh, as usual I'm always about comfort and um, yeah I just think they look great but last year every time I made trousers I kept having fit issues and although each pattern has its own um, you know complications or differences uh, the one fit issue that I kept having was I kept finding that I had creases underneath my bottom with jeans with all sorts of different patterns so I thought right it's the beginning of autumn winter probably going to make more jeans and trousers again and I am going to get this cracked I'm not going to just dive straight in and make the trousers and then moan about it later I'm going to take the time and do a toile so that's what I did and I also remembered to measure myself because I have been off my low carb diet for a couple of months which means a number of things <laughs> grumpiness lack of sleep but it also means a bit of weight gain so um, my waist measurement has increased it was previously 81 centimeters and I measured it again it was 84 ah, these things happen so I selected a size 12 from the um, pattern information which was exactly an 84 centimeter waist um, and the hips I think were about spot on as well can't remember but I think the hip measurement was fine and I checked the finished garment measurements yeah plenty of you know we're all good to go so I made a toile and I put it on and I couldn't get the side that's that side in fact I couldn't get the sides to even touch I was a bit grumpy about it and I was wandering around thinking, I'm sure this happened to me recently. <laughs> I have to admit, I went and had a look at my own YouTube videos to work it out. And it wasn't that long ago, it was in the summer, and it was a pair of shorts, and it was to suity patterns again. So I thought, right, okay, now I'm officially a bit grumpy about this. Um, you know, twiles take time, they take fabric, and you know, if your measurements are spot on, why am I getting the result where I can't even close it up so it was a bit grumpy and then I thought right the fair thing to do is to contact Tasuti rather than grumbling about it or thinking well that's it I can't buy any patterns from them anymore so I sent them an email and I explained what happened a couple of days later I got an email back from them and um, they said they were very sorry and that they'd taken the time to go and look at the sample that they had made and take a measurement from it and they realized that in fact that had grown because it had been made from linen and linen does do that doesn't it it can expand um, and so um, they said look thanks very much for letting us know can't believe nobody's told us this in a couple of years the pattern's been released but thank you very much for letting us know and by way of thanks we'd like to offer you some of our linen fabric which to be honest I thought was a very kind of them and um, a really nice gesture I think they 
took my criticism on the chin and they responded in the way that, yeah, you'd kind of hope a company would respond really. Uh, but I did think, I bet they don't realise I'm in the UK. So we did have a bit of an email exchange where I said, look, I'm in the UK. And they said, no, no, we know you're in the UK. Um, we're really happy to send you some linen. So I thought, well, why not? I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. So uh, hopefully, um, I had a look. They have a huge selection of this particular linen. It's called Bedford linen. All sorts of amazing colours. So I gave them some options of the kind of colours I like and hopefully at some point it will arrive from New Zealand, I believe. Who knows how long it will take to get here, but when it does get here, I'll show you because us in the UK, it's interesting to see what fabrics you have over on the other side of the world. Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased with that as a response. In the meantime, I then made a second toile um, and this time I made a size 16, which to be honest, was a bit too big around the waist, um, so I did have to take some off the waist, but was definitely too big from sort of hips downwards. Um, so really, I think that it's a case for me that the size, size 12 uh, is the right size, but then I need to grade up at the waist. So in effect, I kind of did it the, the other way around. <laughs> I graded down uh, from hips, kind of going straight down to the um, hem. Um, and that worked really well but and when I did that first toile I didn't have any of those wrinkles under the bottom so I was really pleased it seems to hang quite well but what I did have because you've got this flat front and I've got a bit of a tummy was I had a kind of strange wrinkling around the front so it was tight across the middle at the sort of apex of my tummy and then I ended up with this sort of slight bagginess, no man's land, wrinkly area here, either side. And I'll be honest, I still have it slightly on one side. I uh, can't tell from this angle, but on one side it is slightly still, it's the side without the zip, I think. It is slightly still there. Um, but it was very, very pronounced and I thought, this isn't looking good. Um, you know, nobody wants basically arrows going, look, tummy here. Um, or I don't, anyway. So I had a little look around and um, I had been looking at a lady called Peggy Sagers Silhouette Patterns on YouTube. Quite a few people who've commented um, in the past last year have mentioned her as somebody who's great um, in regard to fit. And then also more recently a lady called Leanne Munro who often gives me a like on my videos and uh, is a member of the um, fold line group on Facebook. She had put something on that Facebook group about uh, Peggy Sagers being great for trousers fit. So I had, had a look at her and I was all ready to do all of these adjustments at the back, only to find I didn't need to. And I couldn't find anything about this tummy area. But what I did find was another fellow sewing YouTuber who has got a little series about fitting trousers or pants and that is a lady whose YouTube channel is called Dorothy's Daughter. And again, I'll put a link in there and I just want to say a huge thank you because I have done a pattern cutting course many, many years ago and I think I pretty much did know what to do, but you know sometimes you need someone to tell you, yes, that's, that's the right thing. So again, I will put, well, no point me showing you because she's already done it. I'll put a link below and uh, if that's a, a fitting thing that's of issue, you know, a relevance to you or an issue you might have, go and check her channel out because that little series about pants fitting is really, really good. So big thank you there. So I did make those changes here. I think it fits much better across here, except as I say, this one little area here, which I've noticed if I just, I don't know if you can see, if I just lift that up, it sort of goes. So a bit more tweaking maybe, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the fit. The fabric, by the way, I bought from Fabworks. Um, I did have a look, I don't think it's available anymore, but it was listed as a silky viscose twill suiting. It was only eight pounds a meter, so that's a pretty good price. Um, I really liked it because I thought, you know, I want these to be a basic pair of trousers that are going to go with pretty much everything I've got. And if you've watched before, you know, I'm trying to stick to this autumnal color palette. And the idea is, that all those colours should work really well together. So I thought, well, 
I don't want to just make basic black trousers. Um, actually, I'm not convinced that black does go with absolutely everything and I have a white dog. So black is not always the most practical colour to be wearing at home. Got a bit of a herringbone, um, well, like a twill type effect to it. And they do feel really nice to wear. So I'm really pleased with the fabric. Um, the instructions from Tasuti were very good. As always, they are very good at explaining the steps. If you've made anything with by Tasuti patterns before, you know that they have this system where they use tear off violine for stabilizing things like necklines and uh, waistband waistline um, anything that needs to be stabilized and also the zip area and i've always ignored that in the past i've always just done stay stitching because frankly it's easier and also i don't have any tear off violin uh, but this time i thought well i did just stay stitch the waistband but the side area where the zip is I thought, well, rather than um, using interfacing, um, repeating myself here, but I hate the um, iron-on interfacing. What I did was I used, I had some sew-in interfacing and I thought, well, I'll see if that does the same thing and whether in fact, once I've inserted it, I can tear it out later. Um, so I did follow the exact instructions that they provided for inserting a zip. And I have to say, it doesn't tear out. Um, you obviously do need specific tear out filing. Um, but I did think it worked really well and I just cut it out. So it really wasn't that difficult. Um, and actually their zip instructions were quite interesting because it, it is an invisible zip. But you know normally with an invisible zip you um, insert the zip first and then you sew the two pieces of fabric together, the, the rest of the seam together. But they did the invisible zip the other way around, the more like a normal zip. So they sewed up the hem and then inserted the zip. And I quite liked that. I thought, well, I've not seen it done like that before, I don't think. Um, so I'll follow those instructions and see how I get on. I really liked it. So, um, yeah, I really do think that's quite a good technique that I shall steal for future garments. Other than that, my zip was, uh, I couldn't get a zip to match. Uh, but can you tell? I don't know that you can tell. Um, it was massively longer, so I did just do a little whip stitch at the end, I cut it off, and at the moment it's just hanging free. And I thought, I'll wait and see, because if it's not irritating me um, and sort of scratching, I might just leave it. Otherwise, I could just sew a little sort of shield over it. Um, but on the other hand, as I say, they are quite tight fitting and I don't really want any extra bulk. So although there was a mix up with the pants, I'm really happy with how it was resolved and I'm really happy with the outcome for me. Um, I do feel like I've got a pair of uh, trousers or pants that I'm going to wear all the time. Probably not with things that are big and baggy and oversized, but certainly with blouses and t-shirts. I do think you have to be, or I have to be a little bit careful about footwear. I'm wearing these with my trainers. Um, I'm not a fan of wide leg trousers with heels. I think, yeah, I'm just not keen on how that looks. And I think you've got to be a bit careful with the hem length on something like this. Too short and they look a little bit odd. In fact, I think the picture that Tasuti have uh, of their full length ones, I think that looks a little bit too short for me. I've made mine so that they hit about a centimetre and a half uh, above the ground at the heel. And that's the other thing, of course, with uh, wide leg trousers is that when it's a rainy day, they can get a bit soggy around the hem. So that's not great, but I really like them. And let's be honest, we're not going out a great deal at the moment, are we? Especially not in the north of England. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with them. In fact, I think that I want to make another pair that are slightly cropped because I feel like slightly cropped ones um, will give me more options footwear wise. Like I could wear those with boots. Somehow I feel like if they're cropped, they work better with boots than if they're full length. I don't know, personal taste. It's just how I feel. So yeah, overall really, really pleased with them. I will try really hard to get this next video out for this amazing garment that I've been pattern testing and so hopefully you might even hear from me again tomorrow and um, but 
I make no promises. And the other thing to mention is that I have been sticking to my plan. I have tried them on once I finished making them. I tried them on with lots of things that I already have in my wardrobe, both me made and uh, ready to wear, although I'm getting more and more me made percentage. Um, so I have done that, but it would take me forever to show you all those different options. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna try and make more effort to post on Instagram when I've got a DIY outfit, i.e. an outfit that I've largely made everything in the outfit. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you have got an Instagram account, pop over there and I will try to keep that updated with um, yeah, options. So as and when I wear different combinations of things that I've made, I'll pop them over there. But in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed and you have found this of interest, it would be fabulous if you would. And to everybody else, I will see you soon. Hopefully tomorrow. Fingers crossed. All right. Bye-bye.